as you can tell probably by now, Colin is not not that exciting. But I don't know, maybe um, aspiring photographers or people who are trying to get into the into the business of wedding photography can kind of see, I don't know, maybe my flow. Um, and they can kind of hopefully learn something from it. I was shooting all these with the 50. And as they're walking down at 1.8, just so there's some nice depth of field behind them. I'm a big advocate of getting people's reactions. I love kind of the documentary style of photography that you can you can do in in um, when shooting weddings. And uh, I mean, there's so much <laughs> that's cute. There's so much to document during a day. Um, that it's uh, I mean, there's it's just during a wedding, it's insane. It's a lot of emotions and a lot of stuff going on. I always try to get a shot of the groom, especially if he's his reaction's great. Definitely was for Logan's in this case. I believe I was tucking away for these couple shots right here because my wife, I had her shoot a wide shot of them coming down the aisle, which we will see when we call her set. It's a really cool shot. I'm excited for that. I don't do manual focus on these shots, FYI. Always trying to get creative with my shots. Framing and all that stuff. And here we are, on to the ceremony. The pastor told them to look back and basically to break the ice, kind of, uh, I think everybody like cheered for them or something. It was cool, cool moment. This is a cool venue. It's really beautiful, especially this time of the day. The light is behind us, so... Uh, it's really even light on everybody. The sun was just going down, so there's nothing harsh. Um, a lot of green. So in post-production, it'll look, I think it'll look just beautiful. Look like a nice, summery California wedding. But it was in Oregon. There's a shot of the whole venue. If I'm on a shot like this, I'll usually wait till I can get a reaction out of somebody before I move. So I'll wait, 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 and then there. I got something here. Something from here I can take right there. There. People smiling is, of course, always better than when they're not smiling. So I'll always try to grab something. I, I'm really, my approach for, for shooting ceremonies is... Um, I try to not be obtrusive. I try to not be annoying. I try to not be behind them like this very much. Um, I never go behind the altar. I never walk past that way. Uh, my camera is always on silent mode. So I'm trying, trying to, again, be a fly on the wall, uh, even during ceremony, just because the day is not about me um, and I don't want people to get distracted because of whatever the heck I'm doing. So always keep that in mind. Don't try not to be distracting. Same with videographers. They're usually pretty distracting. <laughs> this was with my 70 to 200. I only use that for ceremonies, really. I don't use it for anything else these days. I'll get a couple tight shots and then put it away. So again, I'm looking for a reaction or a shot like that, which I like. And now I'm back to my 50. Pastor was great, super funny. Got them to laugh a lot. 
sometimes I'll get a little bit closer up in the aisle like this uh, for when they do vows or maybe during the, the kiss at the end. So again, trying to not be distracting in any way when I'm taking photos. And some could say like, well, David, why don't you just shoot a 70 200 back from the aisle like you did a couple shots ago? And uh, I don't know. My answer to that is I like the way the 50 looks better. And um, yeah, I don't know. The 70 200 just compresses a little bit more than I'd like. And I can't always use that in, in all my ceremony locations just because the light might be a lot less than... Um, than what it is here. So this was getting a little bit more on the dark side, to be honest. This was seven o'clock and in Oregon right now, our, our sunsets were like 7.15. So it was getting dark. Um, you can see I'm shooting one, 1.2 on the 50, one, one, or 6.40 on my shutter and then 6.40 on ISO. So it was starting to get a little dark, but still no match, no problem for the cameras. No issues at all. And this is coming up to the kiss. So I get a little closer. I check my focus. I double check. I manual focus. Oh, never mind. This is uh, communion first. They were all praying, so this was an opportunity to get just a tad closer um, without anybody seeing, and then I pulled back. And here's the kiss. I'll try to snap a few portrait uh, landscape, and if they still are kissing, I'll go to portrait, but. I always shoot AI servo for getaway. So I'm focusing while I'm walking, being cautious of what's behind me. A little dark on these. If I wanted any of these, I could save them. I'll probably pick one or two. This is cool. He, he picked her up and ran, ran behind a bush. And I thought I'd kind of just document a little bit of it and then let them be. So I just shot a couple photos. And then I let them be. Onto the reception. So reception, the location's um, interesting. It's pretty cool. It's an old building. It has some windows, but obviously there's no natural light because it was, it was uh, already dark, almost, almost all the way dark. So we're relying on what they have in there, which is a bunch of marquee lights, a lot of halogens. And at some point we use a couple flashes just to do some crazy effects, um, kind of some fun stuff for the dancing. But for most of the time during reception, we just relied on uh, the natural light that was in there. And uh, we can correct the white balance and stuff in post because we're raw. So just to give you an idea with the lighting as it is not dimmed yet or anything. We were shooting 1.4 ISO 1600 and then one one hundredths of a second. That's kind of my safe spot. That is still a little bit low for my liking for dancing stuff. That would be a little bit too slow. You'd get motion, um, but it's easy to handheld that at, at 50 millimeters. So. Cool roof. Crazy spot. Basically, I'm just getting some details. They're about to get announced in right here. The 
These will be cool shots. Probably black and white or something cool like that. And then they went right into their first dance. So again, my settings are still the same, 1600, 1.4, one, one hundredths of a second. And I, sh I was on the 35 now for this and my wife had my 50. Mist focused there. 35 looks great. Um, it's, it's seriously such a cool lens. If you've never shot a 35, 1.4, Man, you got to do it. There's something about it that um, it doesn't always look good in camera sometimes. It, it deceives you because you think you have zero depth of field when you're a little bit wider out like this, even at 1.4. But once you get home and you look at the file, you realize like, wow, it's, it's a great shot because it's enough separation from the background of people that it focuses you in on them. So it's a great lens. I need to use it more. Shooting a little bit wider. Just such a cute couple, eh? <laughs> He's a goofball. He's so fun. Not many groomsmen are, or not many grooms are uh, this fun, to be honest. He's. Yeah, like I said in the beginning, he he just he loved her, you know, and it was so apparent throughout the day. It was so apparent through what people had said about them during speeches and so forth. So it was for my wife and I. It was like the day was easy and it was genuine and it was so fun to document it with him. Okay, that's all I got time for for now. Uh, next video, the link below. Make sure to click it. Hey guys, if you like this series so far, please click like. Uh, the thumbs up, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, your thoughts, um, how we can make this better, and uh, subscribe, share it with the world. Uh, I'm going to keep these coming. This is kind of a fun series. It's a long one, of course, because we're doing a full wedding, and I don't know, I haven't seen this done yet before on YouTube. So yeah, strap in, let's do it.